lock in and load up. Hello, we're gonna go over the standardization of an acid and a base experiment. Um, we're gonna start with the prep, which if you have your proper PPE, you're gonna actually do the first week. Uh, the first thing you're gonna prep is your sodium hydroxide solution. That's gonna go in your two and a half liter jug. So you're gonna wanna make sure this is clean. I would rinse this several times with DI water. Um, the DI water is the single handled gray spigot in the corner sink. Do not use any soapy water. You don't need to use soapy water and you don't wanna use soapy water. It's gonna leave a residue. And if you don't rinse that out, then that residue is basic. That's gonna interfere with a lot of your future pH-based titration. So do not use any soapy water. Just rinse it six times with DI water. Then you're gonna to need to get enough water for the solution. So you're gonna get your large one liter beaker, same thing, rinse that with DI water, make sure it's clean, and then fill it to the mark. You want about a thousand milliliters of DI water in here. And we're gonna to need to boil this. We're gonna to need to boil this to remove the CO2. And I'm gonna ask you a question, why do we need to remove the CO2? To speed up the boiling process, I would come over to one of the microwaves. We have two microwaves in this room. Doesn't matter which one you go to. Open that up, put your water in there, and give it five minutes. And then you can take it to the hot plate and it's gonna boil a lot sooner, a lot faster. You're gonna save yourself some time. Buy any one of the three ovens in the rooms, you will see oven mitts. So after you've heated the water quite a bit, it won't be boiling yet, but it will be very hot. Make sure you get those oven mitts to take the water out of the microwave. More than one of you can do this, so if someone else has their beaker ready at the same time, both of you could put your water in the microwave together. And then under this oven, we have all our hot plates here. Go ahead and grab one of those, plug it in by your station, set your hot water on there, and turn that up to eight or nine or something like that. And hopefully that'll start to boil within a few minutes. Once it started boiling, you want to keep it on there for five whole minutes, make sure it boils for five minutes to remove as much of that CO2 as you can. While that's heating up, you can figure out how much of the 50% sodium hydroxide mass by volume you're going to need to make one liter of a 0.1 molar solution. Get that amount of sodium hydroxide, introduce it into your clean two and a half liter jug, and after your water has boiled, you can take it off the hot plate, let it cool for a couple of minutes so it's not quite at 100 degrees, it's a little cooler, before you then transfer it into that two and a half liter jug. Once you've done that, you've done everything you need to do to prep that sodium hydroxide solution, and we'll just let that sit in there for a week or two until you're ready to use it for the remainder of the experimental portion. You can also make your hydrochloric acid solution, that's a one liter, of a 0.1 molar HCl solution. You're gonna use your one and a half liter poly jug for that. Again, rinse this with DI water several times so you know it's clean. Figure out how much of the concentrated hydrochloric acid, how much of the 12.1 molar HCl are you gonna to need to make one liter of a 0.1 molar solution. Make sure you have your clean graduated cylinder, get your HCl, introduce it into here, and then add the water. This, you do not need to boil the water. You do not need to remove the CO2 from. So again, question, why? Why do we have to boil the water for the sodium hydroxide solution? Why do we need to boil the water for the HCl solution? And that's what you're gonna do for the prep portion. Hopefully you'll do that the first week. If not, then on the third week, when we get to this actual experiment, you'll have to start with the prep before you can go to do the titration. If you do the prep that first week, then the remainder of the experiment is gonna be standardizing these, figuring out what is the actual concentration of your sodium hydroxide? What is the actual concentration of your HCl? You're gonna standardize those with a concentrated, with a, with a, a stock, pure uh, potassium hydrogen phthalate solution, or not solution, but powder. We will have already put that in the oven for you to dry, so you don't need to worry about that. Aww. We've got beakers of KHP in the oven. Right before lab, we'll take those out we'll put those in the desiccator to cool when you're ready you'll get this out of the desiccator take it to the balance room mass out that you know whatever it is 0 0.6 0 0.7 grams of that potassium hydrogen phthalate that you need once you've got that you'll take your volumetric flasks rinse them with the eye water several times make sure they're clean 
add the 25 milliliters to this question. Does it have to be exactly 25 milliliters? Would it be okay if it was 26? And then take that KHP and introduce that into here. If you can, you probably wanna introduce it when it's dry, and then you can see there's a little residual KHP. Rinse that residual KHP into there. You need to make sure that you get all of everything that you masked. So if you masked exactly 0.6111 grams of KHP, you need to make sure that you have all of that 0.611 grams of KHP in the volumetric flask. Swirl it until it's completely dissolved. It's mostly soluble. Uh, you may have a little difficulty dissolving it. If you do, just a little tiny bit of heat will carry it the rest of the way there. So you could put it on that hot plate if there's a little residual heat on there or hold it in your hands for a little bit and usually the heat from your hands will be enough to get that to dissolve. You're gonna to go to your burette. Your burette should have DI water in it. That's what the last person who used it should have filled it up with. I didn't do shit. So you could just go ahead and empty that out and then we're gonna titrate our KHP solution with that 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide that we've made already. So what I'll probably do is a little rinse first. I'll take this burette, and so that I get rid of any water, what I'll do is a small aliquot of the sodium hydroxide, probably about five to 10 milliliters. Just do a little rinse around the sides in here. This is diluted, it's pretty weak, so if you turn on the sink, it's okay to let this go down the sink. You can let this pass through. But now I've sort of conditioned the burette. I know any residual liquid in here is actually this 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide that we're gonna fill it with and not any residual water or something else that might have been in here. You could pour it like I did, or if you want, make use of your solution funnel and pour this way. You could fill it all the way up right to the zero mark, which is 50 milliliters if you want, or you could do something less. Just really all that matters is you know exactly where you started on that burette. Did you start at the 0, 0.00 mark or did you start at the 3.50 milliliter mark or whatever it happens to be. So I've got my sodium hydroxide in my burette ready to go. I've got my dissolved KHP. I know how many moles of KHP in there because I know the mass of the KHP and then we have our phenolphthalein indicator. All the indicators are usually on top of the sinks on the bench, so there should be two dropper bottles per bench. Add three drops of that. Again, give it a little mix, and then I can start titrating. What I wanna do, if I can, is manipulate this with one hand and be able to mix it at the same time with the other. You need three good titrations. If you're good or you're lucky, the first one's usable. If not, the first one's a rough titration that isn't really as good and that's okay. You're just gonna go ahead um, and do a fourth one and you'll probably use your second, third, and fourth one. And that first one will be a rough one just to give you an idea. Um, I'm adding pretty quickly. I'm starting to see some pink color, but not a lot. When I do, I'll probably start to slow this titration down. What I'm looking for ideally is a very faint pink. And like I said, your first one may be rough. You may not get that. You may get a darker pink your first time. You can see it persists a little longer each time the closer I get to that end point. If I get really close, then ideally I'm gonna add this a drop at a time. And there we go, that's a little darker than what you'd want. So you want something just a little bit lighter than that. And if you're not sure if you have a white piece of paper or something like that, you can set that under this and get a better idea. So now what I'm gonna do is come back to my burette, I'm gonna read where did I start? You know, I started at 3.50. I ended at 22.63 uh, or whatever, and I'll figure out exactly what volume of the sodium hydroxide I added. When you go to do the HCl, you'll essentially do it the same way, but now that we've done a bunch of titrations with the, the sodium hydroxide and the standard KHP, we hopefully know what our concentration of our Sodium hydroxide solution is, and then we're gonna to go to our HCl. I'm gonna pour this into a secondary container. I'm gonna use my 25 milliliter pipette. This is the most uh, precise way to deliver exactly 25 milliliters. So I would take that, pull up, okay, pull up, that 25 milliliters of HCl, 
And then I'll ask you, in this case, does it matter? Do we need exactly 25.0 milliliters of HCl? Or is it okay if it's 24 or 26? We'd let that introduce that under there. We've got our 25 milliliters of HCl. And then we, again, add our indicator and titrate again with the sodium hydroxide. So ideally, you have at least three good titrations of the sodium hydroxide against the KHP, and then another three good titrations of the sodium hydroxide against the HCl. And then you can figure out what's the actual concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution you made. Save that, because you're gonna use that for a future experiment. You'll probably have 700, 800 milliliters of that left. Do not dump that. And you can figure out what's the exact actual concentration of your HCl and save that. Do not dump the remainder of this because you're gonna use that for a future experiment. And these are all safe to go down the sink. We'll post you know, where the waste can go on day of the actual experiment, um, but that should cover it. So there you go.